Good morning, everyone. I'm going to talk to you about Halloween, as you can see. I'm dressed up a little bit for it here. So Halloween has a long history. It has changed a lot in the last 3,000 years. But there are some things that have not changed and has evolved. And it's almost time I brought up here on my screen. It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. Those that know me know that I'm going to be digging out my shoes that are based on this uh, show. So you'll see me at the school if you come in wearing them when I come around to the classes. So I'm going to be doing this in three parts. Today we're going to talk about the first part of it because there is a lot in this whole history of Halloween and I'm just going to be glossing over some of it. So it started back in Ireland and in the British Isles and in northern France among the Celts. The Celts was a culture of people. They lived in, on the land. They didn't have a lot of understanding of the different seasons and how things changed. So they were very suspicious and superstitious, but they grew their food. And once they harvested everything, that was it for the year. If they didn't have enough, people were gonna die of starvation through the winter or their animals would die. So they would go to their priest, which were called Druids, and have the priest pray for them. And so they had this big thing on the first day of winter um, where they would all get together and pray. It was called Samhain, which is the Gaelic word for November. They feared evil spirits because they felt that the spirits were going to come back and walk the earth. And that's the spirits of the people that had passed away in the past year. And so to appease these uh, spirits, they would give them offerings of food and sweets which we now know as trick-or-treating. So that's where trick-or-treating came from. And they would build the bonfires and pray for the sun to return. They held animal sacrifices to give back to the earth what they had taken from it through the harvest. So again, very superstitious culture. Uh, the Druids be believed that on Samhain night was the best time to predict the future. So they would tell stories of what was going to happen in the next year. Again, this is tying in with our ghost stories that were coming in. So here's a picture of bonfires to ward off evil spirits. Here's some ancient druids. I did bring up some ancient leaders and Boudicca and Irish chieftains, or British chieftains, I'm sorry. And the one reason I brought this up is because this is where I got the name for my cat was Boudicca. She was a Celtic queen that is known through the Roman documents for killing many, many Roman soldiers in battle. So my hope was that my cat would kill many mice if I get any more mice in my house. So there were these stone piles that you will see all throughout Ireland and they're called fairy mounds. The Celts believed that the fairies would walk the earth on Samhain night. So the Celts would dress in costume to represent this. This again is tied in with our children now dressing in costumes. So now we will move on to the ancient Romans. The ancient Romans, they had Panoma. And that is from the goddess of the garden and fruits. And they worshipped her in a festival where they laid out apples and nuts. This happened around November 1st. This is where we got apple bobbing from. You know, that evolved into that tradition. So in about 50 BC, Rome conquered much of Northern Europe and merged or attempted to merge their traditions of Samhain and Panoma, uh, where they combined the harvest because that was Panoma, with uh, the dead, which was Samhain. And this ended up resulting in Christianity versus pagan beliefs that has lasted for centuries. And during the 4th century, we had Constantine. He was a Roman emperor. He had a vision on the battlefield and of Christ. And he decided once he won the battle, he was going to convert to Christianity. Most of you will recall this from your history books that it was would have been brought up in world history. He summoned the Council of Nicaea and sent out missionaries to try and convert the pagans, but it was very difficult. 
So here is a picture of the Council of Nicaea, about 325. Um, so he sent them out, which was very difficult because these are deeply seated beliefs that the pagans had. And trying to combine them just is so hard. As you can tell, we still have the ghost stories. We still have the apple bobbing. We still have kids dressing up in costumes. We still have trick-or-treating. So now we end up with uh, Pope Gregory the First. He comes in and he tries to merge the beliefs by creating All Saints Day, which is November 1st. All Saints Day is also known as All Hallows Day, which hallow is the word for saint. So the eve of All Hallows Day became, All ha became known as Halloween. Again, we're bringing right back up to current day. Now in the 10th century, the church made another stop and declared November, another step, I'm sorry, and declared November 2nd as All Souls Day to try and remember everyone who had passed away in the past year, that saints and all the people. Again, trying to connect in the pagan with the Christian. Now we will take a little switch here and talk about witches. Witches became a sign of the worst in paganism. The world um, word witch comes from the old English of Wicca, which is a wise one, and it's usually a woman, which of course went against the church beliefs because women they didn't believe could have power or knew what they were doing. Um, they were supposed to be subservient to the men. So they ended up within the 1400s, they started hunting them and punishing the witches. And in 1486, Pope Innocent VIII, he published a book claiming a direct link between the witch and the devil. He outlawed the whole pagan religion, everything. So another reference to your history books. Again, here's Pope Gregory the First. Here is Pope Gregory the Third. And combined beliefs, people trying to do the best of both beliefs here. We have the black cat and the witch. And Pope Innocent the Eighth. And here is Joan of Arc. This is another reference within your history books. Joan of Arc was burned at the stake for being a witch in 1431. Again, she was a woman with power and knowledge. She was very young. She was a teenager at the time. But that was a threat to the men around her. They didn't like the fact that she was able to be better than them and had more knowledge within the battlefield. So that might be part of why she was burned as a witch. Um, that's some beliefs I've kind of come across as I've done research. So back to the animals, you know, of course, the black cat has been associated with uh, witches. Cats are nocturnal by nature, and it was believed that the cat was a witch in animal form. And bats being associated with Halloween, bats are drawn to mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are drawn to people. People are around these bonfires that the pagans were having which of course drew the mosquitoes, which of course drew the bats to the mos to eat the mosquitoes. So it's all association here. So this is gonna be the end of part one and watch next week and we'll have a little more Halloween and how the pagan holiday has evolved a little bit more through the centuries.